first day of USF Juniors competition, wheel to wheel, that is already in the books here at NOLA Motorsports Park. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Howden, the voice of this USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. Two races still to go for USF Juniors. They requalified this morning to set the grid for today's races. And joining me right now, Liam McNeely, the driver out of the UK, running for J. Howard Driver Development. Liam, you were quick here at spring training. You know you've got the pace. You know you have the team. You've already raced yesterday. What are your thoughts coming into this afternoon? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, just getting a good start. Um, obviously, it's a bit bit different to sort of the UK starts, you know, the rolling start. So, yeah, hopefully uh, another good start and, yeah, you know, clean that one and, yeah, get going from there. Great to have you with us here this year in the international field, as you know. What's the di- biggest difference you've had? You know, you did a lot of racing, of course, in, in the UK, Genetta Junior, GB4. Coming over here, what have been the biggest differences racing here in the U.S.? Um, yeah, I mean, there's quite a few differences. Um but mainly how the event sort of run, um, you know, well run. And uh, to be honest, just like the amount of laps we do, we're just always, always on the track, always running laps. And yeah, no, it's, to be honest, initially, you know, it was, it was great to come over here. So yeah, uh, just, yeah, good to, good to come over and good to run some laps and yeah, you know, get some good times. As a rookie driver here, there are some so- sophomore drivers you'll be chasing throughout the year, but coming into a track like NOLA Motorsports Park, we have not raced here before, so you guys are kind of on the same level playing field coming in. What are your thoughts on NOLA? A very flat racetrack with not a lot of places to overtake. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, um, a few stops, uh, turn three and four, uh, and then obviously two big straights that you can sort of draft up to and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, there's there's going to be some drafting and, um, you know, some overtakes into 1 and 10. So, yeah, hopefully I can uh, make, uh, make some make it pay. Liam obviously started off saying the starts are going to be very, very crucial. You've got to get out of the gate strongly here. But there are a couple of places to overtake. Again, sophomores versus rookies, as we know. Not only new drivers here this year, but new teams as well. We had a chance to stop by the Zanella Racing Tent. One of the keys to the growth here in USF Juniors in 2024 is a number of new teams coming into the program. And, of course, a lot of young carters coming into the program as well. Standing by with this team owner here, Jose Zanella. This is both karting and coming in as a new team as Jose Zanella's team, Zanella Racing, very big in South Florida and national karting. But you come now into USF Juniors. Let's start with what, what got you to, to go racing. What, what got you to not only expand from karting into USF Juniors? Well, we had a Formula Renault team many, many years ago with my dad, you know, and uh, then the opportunity came out with Leo and, uh, you know, they basically asked me, can you do this with us? And I say, let's just do it. Send it. Exactly that. Now let's talk about the drivers you bring in as well. You've been in karting for many, many years. I used to follow you when you were a young junior carter, but you got a couple of drivers in Diego Guillo and, of course, Leonardo Scorpioni. What are you going to be able to bring to these young drivers, learning and teaching them what they need to do to be fast here? Well, you know, it's, it's of course, you know, I'm happy to have them to start with, and it's it's completely different to what we have done, you know. Uh, now it's a little bit hard with me to, to step away from the coaching, you know. We have a coach, I still help a little, but, you know, uh, we have good expectations with those two, and let's see what we can do. Not only is Adela racing a brand new team in the USF Juniors program, but they also have two rookie drivers here as well. And joining me right now, Leonardo Scorpioni, one of the top junior carters in North America, making the jump up like every young driver wants to do that. How excited are you, uh, Leonardo, to be running here in USF Juniors this year? I mean, I'm really excited. It's honestly just like karting days. I race with most of these people back in karting. It's like we all moved up to cars now, and it's honestly amazing. Do you feel any pressure coming up into cars, or is it kind of like an easy transition? I mean, I think I'm one of the youngest ones, so for me, I know they have a lot more experience than me, so I don't feel like a lot of pressure. No one really expects a lot from me now. Like, I'm one of the youngest, everyone knows that, but it's more learn and get better for the future. Coming in here as a rookie team, what expectations do you put on yourself? What are you hoping to achieve here in your first season? Well, honestly, at this point, I don't know. I mean, we started the the year with uh, maybe top 10. uh, It's good enough. Uh, Then, you know, with the Academy, we had really some solid results. And uh, then, of course, that brings your expectations a little bit higher. But, uh, you know, the goal is always to win. But, uh, you know, it might be a little unrealistic for this year. But that's that's still the goal. You know, the goal is to be in the top speed, all the top step sorry all the time so that, that's what we're going to push for well you're a racer at heart for sure and of course leonardo scorpioni winning one of the races at the academy winter series definitely races things up let's wrap things up here 
opening weekend of the year? Is it top tens, or you just want your drivers to stay out of trouble? Uh, top ten. I mean, uh, if, if if they have to get in trouble, you know, I, I don't want to back them up. You know, I, I think they, you know, since the beginning, I want them to push and, and show what they have. And uh, if we have to fix something in driving or even the cars, uh, that's if that's what it takes. It, that, that's what it takes. I mean, it, it is how it is. 65 drivers in the paddock. Great to have a lot of young blood in the program here in 2024. Not just drivers, but team owners as well. And as we know, Jose looks like he's ready to fix any cars he has, so he wants his drivers to go to the front. <laughs> you can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. In the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah, road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the Smart Choice in Tires. We are back live here at Dola Motorsports Park and indeed set to roll with the drivers here in USF Juniors, their second race of a triple header weekend. Great time to, to sit down there and talk with uh, Jose Zanella, his two drivers, Leonardo Scorpioni and Diego Guillo being uh, joined this weekend by Alex Popoff as well. Third car uh, actually came after we talked to, to Jose there. So Excited to see these drivers get back at it. As we know, race number one belonged to Sebastian Weldon, but let's have a look at the grid of 25 drivers going to get set to roll off. Actually, 26 will roll off from the grid, starting at the tail of the field. Issues, as we know, in qualifying, if you watch that qualifying session, Aiden Potter in the J. Howard driver development number six, not able to get onto the racetrack after a mechanical issue. He'll start at the tail of the field alongside Rodrigo Gonzalez for the D-Force driver development team. Gonzalez, the Mexican, in the number 20. Row number 12 will have Diego Guillo for Zanella Racing in the uh, white, yellow, and black machine starting 24th alongside Brady Golan for DeForest Racing in the number 18. Row 11, Ava Dobson in the number 5 starting 11. She was able to work her way forward yesterday. Going to try to do the same thing today here starting 22nd for J. Howard Driver Development. Inside of that row for exclusive autosport, the Brazilian now living in Miami, Joao Vergara in the number 90. He was a top 10 driver yesterday. Expect him to attack from deeper in the field. Row number 10 has Patricio Gonzalez, one of the D-Force driver development pilots, starting on the outside of the number 19. And on the inside, J. Howard driver development pilot G3 Argeros, a rookie out of California in the number 3, top 10 yesterday as well. Again, lots of work to be done to move forward here. Row 9 starting on the outside, Michael Succo in the number 10. Uh, in the VRD entry, he'll start 18th. Inside, Hudson Potter in the number 4 for J. Howard driver development. Moving now to row number eight on the outside, Californian Christian Cameron for VRD Racing. In the number 70, inside starting 15, I already talked about Alex Popoff in the Zanella Racing entry. A late entry coming in on Thursday night. They got the car put together uh, Friday morning. One of the ex-team Tovo cars had to get some work done on it, wrap it all up. He missed the first test session on Friday, but it's got quicker and quicker throughout the run. We'll start now on the inside of row number eight. Row 7, Leonardo Scorpioni, the Zanella Racing driver, the number 55. He's going to uh, start on the outside, 14th for the Florida Pilot. Inside, Leandro Juncos out of uh, Indian Indiana in the D-Force entry, of course, for Leandro, the son of IndyCar team owner Ricardo Juncos. Again, finding his feet here in USF Juniors, Juncos in the 17. Row number six on the outside, Aiden Ingrata. Tenth place yesterday for the Canadian as he ran a strong and consistent race. He'll start 12th for Jay Howard Driver Development alongside his teammate, Timothy Carroll. So it'll be Ingrata on the outside, Carroll on the inside, the seven and the eight, respectively. Into the top ten right now, Bruno Ribeiro, the Brazilian for D-Force Racing in the number 16. Good qualifying effort. Fifth in his group to go P-10. Alongside him, a solid improvement into qualifying, Anthony Martello, the Canadian in the number 95 for exclusive autosport. Fifth in his group as well. He goes off from ninth. Row number four, all exclusive autosport. Jack Jeffers, third in the championship last year. Three wins on his uh, resume. 
the number 92 starting in eighth spot alongside him, Evan Cooley out of Illinois in the number 91. Remember, Cooley uh, had an issue in qualifying yesterday, started back in 26th, fought his way up to, I think, 12th or 13th. Excellent run forward. This time, though, he gets to start on the inside of row number four. All Inter MS, the new team on row number three. Ariel Elkin on the outside, most definitely the Charger yesterday, working his way up from 14th into the top five. Elkin from Israel in the number 25, starting in the uh, sixth spot. And Augusto Soto Sharifa in the number 24, finally getting ready to start. He did not start the race yesterday, had an issue with electrics, got it dialed in. He'll launch from P5. Uh, rolling into t- uh, row number two, Max Taylor to number 33. Spun out of the lead in USF 2000, was able to come back to a P6 finish. He uh, will start here, P4, outside of row number two. Alongside him, the young Brazilian, Vinicius Tassaro for D-Force Racing in the number 15. Uh, Tassaro starting in the third spot. 26 drivers in the field, two on the front row, off pole. The driver from London, England, who has starred early on here. Quickest driver. It's uh, spring training here at NOLA back in February. Liam McNeely for J. Howard Driver Development. Pole yesterday will start second today alongside the driver who scored the victory. To start off the season, Sebastian Weldon for VRD Racing in the number 98 on the front row. Weldon and McNeely, row one. Tassaro and Taylor, row two. Soto Sharipa and Elkin, row three. Cooley and Jeffers, row four. Martella and Ribeiro, row five. Carroll and Ingrata, row six. Uh, Hunkos and Escorpioni on row seven. Popoff and Cameron, row eight. Potter and Suko, row nine. Argeros and Gonzalez, row ten. Vergara and Dobson, row 11. Guio and Golan, row 12. Gonzalez and Potter on row number 13. Did have a little bit of a trouble there as I was going through the grid. Aiden Potter did not sound good. Remember, he had the trouble getting off and actually wasn't even able to get past pit lane. Had some troubles. Car didn't sound good at all coming out onto on the pit, onto the the track itself, but able to clear it out, and he finally gets it rolling, and is back to the tail of the grid. Rest of the field coming through turn number eleven. We got time to go racing, folks. A second of three races here for USF Juniors. Again, my name's Rob Howden. Welcome to Dola Motorsports Park. Seventy-four degrees trackside. Quite a bit of cloud cover, but we are seeing some blue coming a little bit. That could change the way the track affects uh, the setup. But again, here we go. 15, or rather 12 lapper for USF Juniors, 15 for 2000, 18 for Pro. The Juniors, a dozen laps to see who stands on top of the podium. And away we go, green flag flying, green, green, green. Taylor diving to the outside, trying to get a spot. Weldon jumping away early. See if he can't capitalize on that pool position. He'll go wide to the outside. No one quite there to go to the inside of him coming through the corner. They're going to go three wide, potentially through. This is not looking good. Oh, they're going to give each other room. Taylor gets a good run, but here's a big run to the outside for one of the inner MS drivers. I think that is potentially Soto Sharipa. Driver dropping a wheel. That's Cooley coming up through turn number three. He went for a little off tracker, but was able to bring it back on cleanly. Good control for Evan Cooley. Clean and green through one, two, and three. A little lock up there for Elkin as he's right on the gearbox right now. I think they're trying. Oh, Elkin's going to dive to the inside, coming out of the corner. Oh, trouble there. Dead stick. Oh, no contact yet. Trouble for Soto Sharipa, and everybody gets around him. Remember, electrical issues for Augusto Soto Sharipa yesterday. I think that car is going to come to a stop. An issue for Soto Sharipa. They had an issue with electrics. It wasn't keeping the power. I think that was him coming out of turn number four, dead stick. I believe he may be sitting over there in four, maybe gets off the track or doesn't pick back up for him. It had nothing coming out of the corner. There how far back he is there. You can see way back when he comes through here, he'll be just cruising to the very back of the pack there. Otherwise, Weldon has came out like a rocket. He is, I don't know how he just came out that quickly. He is flying out front. Weldon has got a massive lead on the opening circuit. Everybody else fighting by. Look at the lead he has on the opening lap here. Wow. 3.3 seconds on the opening lap. That was actually Ariel Elkin who had the trouble, folks. No, did I pick the... No, both the inter MS cars are there. Who was the car that stalled was, was stopped? To sorrow from the back. It was tough to see. It was not the inner MS cars. I thought it was Soto Sharipa with the issue he had with the electrics. No, it was actually Vinicius Tesaro. So lucky that he did not get driven over coming out of turn number four. 
That car just stopped on him. So we're back at it. And Soto Sharipa, the 24, up to second. So if you're an Inter-MS fan, oh, there's contact coming out of the corner there between Taylor and Elkin. Man, this is aggressive racing early. Taylor able to bring it back onto the racetrack. Weldon is gone. Soto Sharipa second. McNeely third. So it was Vinicius Tassaro. I thought it might have been Soto Sharipa. So, again, if you're an Inter-MS fan back in Florida, sorry to throw that out there. As they came back across, I saw those new livery colors of Inter-MS. Those cars look fantastic. They're still on the track. So, indeed, from the back, I thought it was Soto Sharipa, but no, it was actually Tassaro, or Vinicius Tassaro. Sharipa going to work now, trying to find a way by Liam McNeely. The fight now for second, third, and fourth. The final couple spots on the podium is once again, Weldon is gone. He is flat checked out. I don't know how you're two and a half seconds faster on the, on the opening lap or more than that even. 2.7 seconds faster on the opening lap. He's a 39.7 on lap number two. McNeely 40.8. So he's another full second faster on lap number two. 4.5 seconds to lead for Weldon. Wow. Checked out on the opening lap. McNeely runs in second, Soto Sharipa in third, Taylor fourth, Elkin fifth. Right behind Elkin, one of the D-Force drivers, Bruno Ribeiro. Jack Jeffers behind him. Cooley, his teammate right there as well. Ingrata up to ninth, Martella tenth. Through six, over to seven. Everybody's settling in. 4.5 seconds over two laps for Weldon. Long gone. 139.7. He was 2.7 seconds faster than the rest of the field on lap number one. And then nine-tenths quicker on lap number two than McNeely. McNeely, of course, battling. There's Ribeiro fighting it out here with Jack Jeffers now. Cooley's right behind him. That's the fight for sixth, seventh, and eighth. Thirty-nine five for Weldon. He gets another tenth of a second. McNeely coming across line. Thirty-nine seven. So two tenths of a second off now. Last time by Weldon, about two tenths of a second quicker than McNeely, who's built uh, about six tenths of a second down. A little bit more breathing room on Soto Sharipa. And again, those first two laps for Weldon. Wow, unbelievably how quick he was those first two circuits. And and again, he's capitalizing on that with a four point eight second lead. Great fights all the way through the field right now. I'm trying to see if a couple drivers have maybe made some big moves moving forward. Brady Gold's actually fallen to the tail of the field. Hudson Potter and Diego Guillo. Scorpioni now 13th spot. Everybody kind of staying pretty much, I think, in the same position. Not a lot of big movement early on here. Drivers dropping a wheel out of turn six. It's that turn six shot. A little short shoot here. We'll follow him around the corner. In through turn number seven, flat out all the way. Seven over to eight and nine. It's the tail of the field coming through there. Suko, Cameron, Gonzalez, Potter, Tassaro, Guio, Potter, and Golan. Ooh, there's a defensive move down to the bottom. That's Sakuli trying to hold off. Oh, big run around the outside for Aiden and Grada. Oh, pardon me, that is Cooley and uh, I think... Did they, get a, did they get by Ribeiro? Oh, I think they got by Ribeiro. That's Bruno Ribeiro. So there's Jeffers, both he and Cooley able to get by Ribeiro. So move Jeffers now up into sixth, Cooley to seventh. Thought that might have been Ingrata, but no, that was the D-Force car of Ribeiro trying to get back by Cooley. Oh, contact. Somebody's got into the barrier on the exit. We've got contact coming out at turn number 13. Someone into the wall in the rear wing, sitting there on track. That is going to be, I think, the six of Potter. Yeah, that's Aiden Potter's rear wing right in the middle of the racetrack. 
I don't think it's actually in the racing line right now. Hopefully we could potentially get a replay of that because I know that we, it was on screen. I just didn't pick it up as I looked down from live timing back up at the screen. All I saw was the car kind of sideways and pulling away. I think he may have just spun by himself. We've seen that happen before. You're rolling so much speed through there. And of course, Potter, as we know, didn't get a chance to qualify either. So that's his first really on-track laps at speed on the day. Aiden Potter making some contact there. That wing, as I said, is kind of on the inside. I don't know whether, yeah, we're going full course. It's not quite on the racing line, but it, it's enough that we're not going to be able to get to it. Let's put it that way. We don't want a chance anybody jumping out there on a hot racetrack. So full course caution. So that massive 4.7 second let lead for Weldon is gone. McNeely runs second. Soto Sharif a third. Taylor and Elkin fourth and fifth. Jack Jeffers was able to get by Ribeiro, as did Evan Cooley. So Jeffers up to six, Cooley seventh, Ribeiro eighth, Aiden and Grotta ninth, and G3 Argyros rounding out the top ten field. Slowing on the front straightaway. You see that wing right in the middle of the racetrack. Everybody will get behind the pace car here. And once the field clears, the AMR crew will get out there and that wing replaced have a look at the track to make sure there's no shards of, of carbon fiber on the track as well but again uh, a smoking start for Sebastian Weldon I don't think I've seen anybody jet away like that in USF juniors last couple of years since we started this program he had two smoking laps to get out of the gate 2.7 seconds faster than the field on the opening circuit they battled behind him a little bit he got a clean run through turn one and two but he was 2.7 seconds faster, all told, on the opening lap. Uh, nine tenths faster on lap number two, and then only two tenths faster on lap number three. So very good on the cold tires. I expect we'll go green this next time by. Not going to take much to get that cleaned up. The crew is out there, the track crew out there, picking up that uh, carbon fiber rear wing. So the field coming through turn number four over to five. First yellow flag of the season for USF Juniors. They went clean and green through race number one. Just gonna lose a lap here after that little contact coming out of turn 13 for Aiden Potter. That'll put him behind the wall. Whether or not they'll be able to repair the wing mount and even get another wing on there. It's, the wing came off the whole thing, not the rear attenuator, so should be okay there. Crew getting behind the wall. And we'll go back to racing as the drivers come out at turn number eight and nine. Time for a restart here for Weldon. Get those tires warmed up, tires cleaned. We'll get back at it. Weldon, McNeely, Soto, Sharifa, Taylor, and Elkin, top five. Jeffers, sixth. Cooley, seventh. Ribeiro, eighth. And Grotta, ninth. Argyros, tenth. So Argyros able to get by Martella. Martella, 11th. That's a big move up for Argyros. He's the driver who started much deeper in the field. G3 Argyros started 19th. He's up to 10th. That is a strong effort over the first couple of laps for G3 Argyros. I said he ran 10th in the top 10 yesterday fought his way forward with some aggressive maneuvers up to 10th place for Argyros. here's the pace car into pit lane we're going to go back to racing right onto the throttle green flag flying right down to the bottom of the racetrack goes weldon he's going to go back up around they're going to stake up the front straightaway he's down to the bottom of the racetrack big wide move to the outside comes McNeely. McNeely's going to try to run around the outside. He's got good momentum. They're side by side coming through. McNeely on the inside. Weldon on the outside. McNeely's got the inside maneuver. He's going to have to deepen though into turn number three because he can run that outside line in three. McNeely trying to pinch. Here comes Soto Sharipa on the inside as well. McNeely's taking the lead back but over under potentially. No, he's on the outside. Big dive bomb move to the bottom as well. McNeely trying to finish this pass off as they come out of turn number four. Weldon holding on to the spot. He'll dive back to the inside. Weldon thinking to the inside at turn five. No, but he's going to get challenged. He's got the two inter-MS cars right there as well. Soto Sharifa and Elkin. Elkin able to get by Taylor. 
Look for Jack Jeffers to jump. There's a big wheel coming off through turn number six. The exit of six, back through seven. So some wild action. Liam McNeely going by Weldon to take the lead over. A great run. Weldon defended to the inside at turn number one. McNeely, the textbook move to the outside, tried to keep him pinched down and had the run out of turn number one through two, inside of turn number three. And away we go. A couple drivers defending down to the bottom here and coming into turn number 10. Big bump on the bottom of the racetrack there. Cooley fighting it out with Ribeiro. Ribeiro may have position coming into turn 12. Cooley's going to try to run the outside. I think Ribeiro's going to come clean with that. He does. Solid pass there for Bruno Ribeiro to the inside. In turn number 12, you get if you get side by side like that and have that spot coming through 11, and Cooley wisely gave it up. There's damage there. I think that might be the 90 of Joao Vaguera with wing damage. Ariel Elkin now up to third. Soto Sharipo now battling with uh, Max Taylor. That's for fourth. Taylor able to get by, I believe. Jack Jeffers right there looking to clean it up if these guys have any kind of an incident because they're going to be running hard together here. Look at that. Soto Sharipa on the inside. Taylor on the outside. They're not wanting to give it up at all. Jack Jeffers is right there. He'll come out of the corner. Taylor gets a better run on the outside of four. You could do that, and he does beat him over to turn five. There's parts of this racetrack where you can run the outside line, and it may not be what you would think to be, you know, the line to get right down to the apex, but there's so much, uh, you're rolling so much corner speed that you're a lot farther outside, you're able to stay on the throttle. You're on the throttle earlier and longer, and, and you're not having to check it up at all. Turn four is one of those corners. So back down the straightaway here again. McNeely trying to hold on to the lead. Look back there further. 2-3 wide. There's a big move to cross. That's again, that's Ribeiro battling. Oh, that's actually... What happened there? What did I miss? I thought that might have been Cooley. I think that might have been Cooley. He might have lost a couple more spots. He had Argeros and Ingrata right there as well. I think Cooley got a little over... I think Jeffers Bay had some trouble as well. Let's come across the line. Yeah, Jeffers goes back to seventh. Jeffers lost a spot to Aiden and Grada. And Grada works his way up into sixth. Jeffers back to seventh. Eighth is Cooley. Ninth is Ribeiro. Tenth is Argeros. And right behind Argeros as well, I believe Martella, Anthony Martella. Yeah, there he is right there, Martella on the gearbox of Argeros in that white and red exclusive Autosport machine. He'll look to the inside on Argeros coming out of three. Potentially side by side, but you can't quite get it done over there. Cooley doing whatever he can to hold off Ribeiro now. Oh, contact! Ribeiro, left front into right rear. Everybody trying to see if they can't capitalize. Argeros trying to go after him. Martella doing the same thing. Wow. we got some good racing here in juniors. These guys are really hanging it out there right now. Cooley trying to hold on to his spot. What a great run for Aiden and Grada as well. Again, Aiden, starting in 12th, worked his way up into the top 10. He's up to 7th, or 6th, plus 6 for Aiden and Grada. Strong run here as he gets by Jeffers. Jeffers right there with him still. They've got a pretty good gap now. Back to Cooley. But then it's, again, this battle between Ribeiro right there in the... Ribeiro in the 16, Argeros in the 3, Martella in the 95. And then they've got a, back, a gap back to the next good scrap there with Junkos and the Scorpioni. Pop off all there as well. Look at that fight further back. Wow, they're going at it. Oh, one driver in a pit lane. Someone has pulled off. That might, I'm going to say that maybe Vergara with that front wing damage. Yeah, he's falling down the order. Joao Vergara, the exclusive autosport driver, into pit lane with front wing damage. McNeely, half a second, a couple of car legs. That's about it right now over Weldon. But we will have two laps to go this next time by. Remember, just 12 laps for the drivers here in USF Juniors. And Liam McNeely leading the way. Just this fight further back. That is uh, 10th and 11th right there. Argeros and Martella right behind them. Hunko's trying to hold off a Scorpioni.
Again, two laps to go when they get back around to the stripe. McNeely, Weldon, Elkin, Taylor, and Soto Sharif up front. Ingrata sixth. Jeffers, Cooley, Ribeiro, Argeros, Martella. Good shot here. The leaders working their way down the straightaway. We'll get that in a couple seconds. There it is there. That's the lead right now. It's not a lot. And I'll tell you, we're not quite done, I think, with the final position on the podium either. As Max Taylor in the 33, trying to put the pressure now on Ariel Elkin. Elkin in the Inter-MS car. Did some F4 racing last year here in the U.S. Ran some uh, overseas F4 racing as well. Ideally, we'll have him full season here with Inter-MS. And that team looking to make an impact immediately. Soto Sharipa right there, P5. Couple of top five runs. Jeffers able to get back by Ingrata. Jack Jeffers gets back by Aiden Ingrata. There's the pass for P3. Max Taylor is taking it away from Elkin. Taylor back to the podium. Wow, we got some good racing here now. Max Taylor in the 33 for VRD. The 25 of Ariel Elkin for Inter-MS. That's the fight for the final stop uh, spot on the podium. White flag will fly this next time by. One lap remaining when they get back to the stripe. Two to go here right now. And it's a six-tenths of a second lead for Liam McNeely, the British driver. Looking to get his first win. To kick off the season in style here. Drop of a wheel there for McNeely coming out of turn six. That's going to give a little bit more for Weldon. You know, he's uh, fired up seeing that. He'll get a good run through eight and nine. It's still a length and a half or maybe two. Here they come out of turn number nine. Weldon not quite close enough, but he could throw a dive bomb down the inside. That was a bit of a mistake for uh, McNeely. And Weldon's closed up to within a car length. It's coming through turn 11. Liam McNeely trying to get that first win of the year. First win running for Jay Howard, driver development. He's got one more lap to do. He'll see the white flag this time by. One to go. Weldon back up on the wheel. He had a little bit of a glimmer of hope there with that minor miscue for McNeely coming out of six, dropping a wheel. It's not hugely a uh, disadvantage, but you're going to lose a bit of forward bite. And driver concentration as well. McNeely had looks in the mirrors, got room, run the full racing line through turn number one. Probably a couple places class, maybe one, three, four, ten. He's got through one already. Next two back to back, three and four. He'll cover down the bottom of the racetrack. Weldon's close. Taylor holding on to third. Elka not close enough to challenge. Through turn number four. That's the other one there for McNeely. Now essentially can he defend in turn number 10. He's got a length and a half coming through six. Hold on. Here's turn six. Mash the gas, drive it through seven, eight, and nine. Oh, it pulls it to about three or four lengths now. Better run there through uh, six for Liam McNeely. Jay Howard, driver development, looking at their first win of the 2024 season. Just a couple of corners to go. We're not done. Weldon's right there. He's about four car lengths back. What kind of a battle do we get coming down into turn number 10? Does he throw it in? A little bit outside. McNeely covers a little of the bottom, but Weldon's right there. No real place to make a, a, a move here unless you dive it in, you throw it hard. He's not quite there in turn number 12. McNeely doing the best he can in a turn 12. Here's the drag race. Could be a drag race to the line coming out of 13. Here they come. Does Weldon have anything? He'll tuck in the draft. McNeely's your leader. A little bit of a swerve coming up the straightaway. Checker flag flies. Winner of race number two, Liam McNeely. England on top for race number two. Liam McNeely with the win. Sebastian Weldon coming home in second. Max Taylor in third. Fourth goes to Ariel Elkin. Fifth to Augusta Soto Sharuta, uh, Sharipa. Jack Jeffers in sixth. Aiden Ingrata seventh. Another top ten finish for Ingrata. Eighth for Bruno Ribeiro. Ninth for Evan Cooley. Tenth for G3 Argeros. A little intensity at the end of that one. McNeely had a pretty good lead, but again, that little drop of a wheel coming out of turn number six kind of shook up the focus a little bit, lost a little bit of uh, forward bite out of the corner. Probably fired Weldon up too. Hey, I'm in this guy's head. He's going to make a mistake here. He didn't over the last circuit, but Weldon pushed hard over that last lap. Both drivers turning 140s. They kind of backed up a little bit. 
Taylor did a 139.6. He was four tenths quicker than the leader on the last lap. So here's your folks, they've made an adjustment already. I don't know what the penalty was for, but uh, Max Taylor receiving a penalty post race and race control has already put that into the program. So Ariel Elkin will go to third. So Jeffers, whatever, or rather uh, Max Taylor, whatever penalty drops from third down to sixth. Three position penalty for Max Taylor. Not sure what it was on the racetrack, but Ariel Elkin getting moved up into third. So Inter MS will grab their first podium uh, it's Jay Howard, VRD, and Inter MS on the podium. It moves Augusto Soto Sharipa up into fourth. Jack Jeffers to P5. Taylor holds on to sixth. Aiden and Grada in seventh. Bruno Ribeiro in eighth. Evan Cooley ninth. And Anthony Martella up into tenth as well. Why did he go to tenth? Well, uh, G3 Argyros, he might have had a penalty as well. So Anthony Martella goes into the tenth spot as Argyros goes from tenth down to sixteenth. So I believe a couple of penalties potentially being um, calculated immediately. Of course, for the podium, the, the race control does the best they can. If there's a penalty they know they're going to roll out, they'll do it so we have the correct podium. So McNeely, Weldon, and Elkin, those are the top three drivers that will be on the podium here. And again, if you're tuning in, after this broadcast here, we'll go to a quick break. We're back at 1 o'clock, I believe, right around 1 o'clock. Let's have a look at the other schedule here. USF 2000. Yeah, why well, expect the one o'clock start time for the broadcast, something like that for race number uh, three of USF 2000. We'll go back to back with USF 2000 and USF Pro 2000. Another break. Fire up a new broadcast for the USF Juniors as the final race of the day. But man, that last battle was a good one. Liam McNeely, Sebastian Weldon. Liam had to do everything he could to hold them off to get the race win. Weldon comes on win second. Ariel Elkin in third on the podium P3. For the Inter MS driver, Augusto Soto Sharipa. So, top four for both Inter MS drivers. Great debut uh, here. Again, Soto Sharipa didn't get a chance to race the opening circuit with the issue. And again, I thought that was him on the opening circuit who was dead stick coming out of turn number four. It ended up being, uh, as we know, uh, Vinicius Tassaro. Somehow, Tassaro was able to continue. I don't know if he knocked it out of gear or something, whatever it was. He fought back to 11th. Tassaro was dead last. He was all the way down in 24th or 25th, and he worked his way back up. So a great drive for him. But nonetheless, McNeely, Weldon, and Elkin, they'll come over, get themselves weighed, wrap it up. There is Jay Howard going to celebrate uh, with his driver, Liam McNeely. Of course, Jay Howard, expat. I remember when he first came over to run USF 2000 himself back in the Cooper Tire Z-Tech days. But again, McNeely, a big win for him. Scoring the victory here at the Continental Tire. Grand Prix of Louisiana. Race number two for USF Juniors. They'll do it again this afternoon. 3.45 will start that broadcast. Green flag set to go at about 4 o'clock for the drivers at USF Juniors. Again, capping things up down here in victory lane. I'm going to head down there myself, folks. We have three drivers. we got to pass out some awards to McNeely, Weldon, and Elkin. After this quick break, we'll be down in victory lane with award presentations. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires.
a fresh start. It's a career on the line. It's a great chapter. Right? Right? I think everybody's goal is to win championships. All this year is playing to win together, making a good championship season out of it. The reason to keep me alive and the reason to keep me pushing. I mean a lot since I can keep going up the ladder and all those champions and wanting to become part of that list. The drivers are racing aggressive with me, I race aggressive with them. The scholarship is incredibly important, it's obviously the goal for every driver. I'm going to rewrite what happened last year in terms of that rivalry with them getting the best of me. When you win a race, it's the best feeling ever. The field is stacked. Hopefully this year you can have good luck. Having the scholarship money to move up next year is really all I'm aiming for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome down here to Victory Lane and NOLA Motorsports Park as we get set to roll for race number two and USF Juniors. What a race that was. A, a heck of a battle for sure. Let's bring up the drivers who uh, were able to get to the podium. Trophy's already waiting for them at a great drive. Coming home in the third spot for Inter-MS, Ariel Elkin. Third spot today, his first podium. Running in USF Junior. Well done for Ariel. Ariel, grab that trophy, drop that helmet down on top, and we'll get things underway. Whatever, we'll figure it out. I'll have to put that up in a second. Uh, finishing in second spot, he chased at the very end. Sebastian Weldon coming home P2, a great drive, putting the pressure on our leader all the way to the very end. The last two laps, very exciting to watch for sure. Sebastian Weldon coming home in the second position. And the driver scoring the win. He'll come and join me here briefly for an interview. First off, a round of applause. Liam McNeely winning here today. Liam, congratulations, man. The pass, number one, was a big one. You were able to get around the outside in one, held the position coming down through two. That was a hard-fought race for sure. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, you know, didn't get the best start, um, dropped back a bit, but sort of just, you know, had to regain some focus and, yeah, managed to, um, yeah, get a good restart and got the lead and, yeah, just managed to hold on. Obviously getting pressure throughout the race. At the very end, you dropped the wheel, I think, coming out of turn number six, and it allowed uh, uh, Sebastian to get close. Did you know that was coming? Did you expect you were going to have a fight on the final circuit? Yeah, um, you know, I think I pushed the tyres a bit too early. You know, we dropped off a little bit towards the end. So, yeah, um, something that we'll know for the race later today. Obviously, you've raced a lot in your life. To Getting that first win in the series, how important is this for you, you think, to get this first win out of the way? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of just gained some momentum now, and hopefully, you know, Build, build on this for the rest of the season. Who do you want to thank today, Liam? Um, my mechanic, Jeff, JHDD, uh, crew chief, Joe, and yeah, mom and dad. Well done. Get over here. Get up on top of there. Get that trophy. Get the trophy shots here. We'll get the trophy shots done here. Excellent job. Ariel Elkin coming home in third. Sebastian Weldon in the second spot. And, of course, Liam McNeely, a big victory here. Three different teams on the podium as well. Excellent job for Liam McNeely getting the win. Second place, as we said, Sebastian Weldon. Ariel Elkin finishing it up in third spot. And that wraps things up here from Victory Lane. we got champagne to fly here. We'll get bring that in here momentarily. But, again, what a tremendous run. Guys, you can take the car out of the way if you want so you don't get it all hosed down with champagne. Still another race to come for the drivers here in the USF Juniors program. They'll cap off the day this afternoon with race number three. For those of you following in the action right now, a quick break. We'll be back with two races, USF 2000, USF Pro 2000 here in a little uh, bit of time. And then we'll, of course, as I said, cap things off with the drivers uh, in USF Juniors. Fantastic racing for sure. Guys, it's time. Drop things down there. Grab that champagne and give it a spray as we get the things underway. Champagne celebrations here for the drivers in USF Juniors. Weldon goes after McNeely, and that ends our celebration here in Victory Lane. Wrapping things up for this broadcast for USF Juniors, folks. Again, those of you tuning in the live broadcast, make sure you come back and join us. We've got more racing still to come here. Uh, final round for all three of the series. We'll have USF 2000 and USF Pro together. And then, as I said, after a quick break, we'll wrap up the day with USF Juniors. Thanks for tuning in for the broadcast here, folks. On behalf of Anderson Promotions and Continental Tire, my name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.